power in the gospel. For do I be free from all men? Yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. In verse 22, it says, So the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I have made all things to all men, that I might by all means, by all means, by all means, save some. Passion for souls. That's the passion we ought to have. If you really and truly believe that when a soul is saved, when a person is sinner, hears the gospel and he accepts that gospel, and is turned around and turned to the Lord. If you firmly believe that a sinner's relationship is very important and it determines his eternal destiny, you would esteem one soul gain for heaven was a life of suffering. As lay consideration, as lay consequences would not hinder your preaching to sinners, nor seal up your lips before the backsliders. My friend, here is one important thing. Where will you spend eternity? Ah, if I talk about Christ, if I talk about salvation, if I talk about righteousness, if I talk about preparing for the coming of the Lord, he might cut me off and the business may not go through and I may not be able to get the money I want to get. If you believe that the most important thing is the salvation of the soul of this individual or the recovery, the restoration of that backslider, all those earthly, natural, physical, material, monetary considerations will not matter with you. You will strive to look upon eternity alone. And you will strive to look on immortal souls around you. Soon to be everlastingly happy or everlastingly miserable. My question to you today is, what's your priority in life? What are you addicted to? What are you sold on? What are you committed to? What is the very passion and the priority of your life? What is the thing that drives you and the thing that stirs you up? What is the thing that interests you? What are you actually looking for here in the world? Is it the salvation of souls? The condition of service that the Lord told Paul, the very day he called him, he said, Ananas, go to him. But lay hands on him, tell him the things he must suffer for my sake. That was the condition of service. If the Lord used me today to call you, yes, you are winning souls. Yes, you are doing something. But to preach him fully, all your life, everything, so send I you. As my father sent me, so send I you. To live your life's ambition and to die to their desire. And to go to where you are not loved, you are not appreciated. And to go and preach the gospel that the master is sending me to tell you, give your whole life to this. So sad I, so sad I. God needs somebody that will not care for what may happen or what may not happen. And if you are willing to serve and willing to save souls, God will fill you with his spirit. Each the word. What the Lord is calling us to is that there will be the passion for souls. There will be the priority of his servants. There will be the power for service. The Lord is calling us. Let me remind you once again. The one thing needful, saving souls. Let's end with the words of John Wesley again. You have nothing to do but to save souls. Therefore, spend and be spared in this work. It is not your business to preach so many times in so many fellowships, but to save as many souls as you can and to bring as many sinners as you possibly can to repentance and with all the power within you to build them up in that holiness without which they cannot see the Lord. I pray God will set you on fire and your prayer will be, lead me to some soul today. Oh, teach me, Lord, just what to say. Friends of mine, neighbors of mine are lost in sin and cannot find their way. Few there are who seem to care and few there are who pray. Melt my heart. Stand up now. Jesus said, I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh, the night cometh, the night cometh when no man can walk. What is the important work that God has committed into our hands as believers? 
the most important thing that God has given to us is the salvation of souls. The most important work that we must really labor after is the salvation of souls. Where is the passion in your life, my brother? You need to pray. Lord, put the passion in my heart. The passion for souls. You must pray. Open your mouth and pray. Lord, put the excitement in me. Why is it that you are passive? Why is it that you are so lethargic when you see souls that are on, on the way to hell? Why are you not really opening your mouth and your mouth is healed up? You must pray, Lord, put the passion in me. Put the excitement to win souls into my heart. Lord, put the diligence in me. Lord, make the fire be burning in my life. Whatever be the thing that is really quenching the fire, tell the Lord to remove it from your life. Is it worldliness? Is it love of money? Whatever is really quenching the fire to evangelize, you need to tell the Lord today, Lord, remove those things from my, my life. Lord, let the fire be burning. Fire for souls. Let my heart burn for the souls of men to burn in my heart, Lord, the desire to be able to see that sinners are rescued. Where is the priority? What is your priority in life? What is your priority? What are you looking for in the world today? Are you looking for fame? Are you looking for the honor of men? Are you looking for the money that can fly away? You will not see it again. What are you looking for? Are you looking for how you be elevated in the community. But today, the Lord is saying we should have a mind, a focus upon the salvation of souls. That should be what we should really look for, sinners to be saved, for souls to be converted, for us to be ready to bring sinners into the kingdom. Souls are dying and many are going to the Christless eternity. Are you ready to spend and be spent for the salvation of souls? Are you ready to spend and be spent for rescuing the sinners so they can, they can be saved? They will not perish. They will not go to hell. Um, you need to pray. Open your mouth. Tell the Lord. Lord, set my soul on fire. Met my heart, O Lord. Fill my life with the love of God. Fill my life with the compassion for souls. Where is your passion today? The Bible tells us, Woe is unto me. That's what the apostle said. Woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. On the other hand, you can say, blessed am I when I'm preaching the gospel. But if you are not preaching the gospel, if you are not really opening a mouth to tell sinners to repent of their sins, we meet them in the market, we meet them in the working place, we meet them in our family. Many of our relations, they are on the way to hell. If you do not open our mouth to tell them to repent and give their lives to Jesus Christ, my brother, my sister, this is opportunity. This is a privilege. Why we are on the daytime, we are in the daytime, we should really make use of the opportunity now to bring souls into the kingdom. Now before us, we have the global crusade coming up in Ibadan. What are we doing to be able to rescue the perishing, to bring the people unto the law? Those who are helpless, those who are fainting, those who are on the way to hell, we must do something for their salvation. This is opportunity to be able to bring them to the knowledge of Christ. Pray, Lord, make me a soul winner. Lord, let me rescue people unto the Lord. I want to bring them. Lord, I want to be a soul winner, not to be a soul loser. As I'm winning them, I want to follow them up. I want to see them integrated into the body of Christ. I want to see them to become disciples of the Lord. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, Lord, help me while I have the opportunity now. We are going to pray. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name because of the privilege you are giving to us to be here today. I'm praying, Lord, that the word of God we are going to hear, we bring about real compassion for souls. We make us to have the passion. We make us to have the fire to go out and bring souls to the Lord. Lord, we pray that come and make use of your minister, make use of your, of your servant to be able to minister the word of God. That as our Father and the Lord ministers the word, the word we have a place in our hearts and our lives will be transformed. And this year is going to be a fruitful year. This year we are going to see many souls turn around for Christ so they can become children of God. Thank you, mighty God for your first set of prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the Bible study. Thank you for your people. Thank you for their faithfulness. Thank you for bringing us together. We pray, Lord, we'll not study in vain. In Jesus